detour to the objective lens, allowing us to look at the edge of the sample. Be careful when tilting the stage with the large wafer. Tilting the stage can crash the sample into the lens. Be sure to lower the stage when tilting a large wafer. The tilting of the sample when the chamber door is open is only for demonstrational purposes only. The stage must be in the loading position when the chamber door is closed. Remember, the exchange position sticker on the right side of the SEM has the venting positions listed on it. After loading a sample, we are ready to close the chamber. Push and hold the chamber door closed and press the evac on button. When the vacuum pump starts, we can let go of the door. Wait for the chamber to reach operating pressure. We know that it has reached operating pressure when the vacuum bar turns blue and the text box states the high voltage is ready. Check the magnification and turn it to the minimum setting by using the dial on the control box. These icons select our scan speed. The pop-up help box will tell you the results of pressing the button. We want to start in TV1. Go to Operate File and check what the rotation tilt settings are. Make sure that Rotation Tilt Raster Rotation is off. We also check Image Adjust. If the Stigmator setting is very far from the center, we click the box in the corner and it will return the setting to the center. These are the best positions when we are beginning a scan. Now we can turn on the high voltage. You should now be able to see an image on the screen. Click on Accelerating Voltage to see the accelerating voltage parameters. Check the AFS, which is Automatic Filament Saturation. This will automatically adjust the filament current to the correct setting. You can also click on one of the automatic buttons, which will automatically tune the image. This should put us close to a good setting. Now we can adjust the focus for the best image quality. The focus distance is shown on the bottom of the screen. This value should be very close to the z-axis value. If you don't see this bar at the bottom, go to Setup, then Data Display, and check these settings. If this is not selected, the Data Display will be off. If we don't want the black, we can deselect the black bar and we will get white letters superimposed on the image. These boxes will show the working distance, the accelerating voltage, the magnification, the photo size, and the scale marker. As you can see, the working distance is 36 millimeters. On the stage, the working distance should be 30 millimeters, so this value should be adjusted to match up with the value of the stage. We cannot get perfect alignment, but the value should be close to the Z setting on the stage. Once the area we want to look at is in the center of the field of view, we can increase the magnification. You may need to recenter the image after we increase the magnification. If we want to look at a different area of the sample, move the stage in order to bring that section into the field of view. If we focus the image and it appears that the image is moving left and right or up and down, this means that we need to adjust the stigmation. Adjusting the stigmation is only useful if we are above 2000 magnification. One way to adjust the stigmation is to go to the operate menu, then go to alignment, and then go to Stig X. As you can see, the image is rocking. Adjust the stigmation using the control box until the image stops rocking. If we turn the knob and the rocking changes direction, that means that we have adjusted too much. You can also adjust the stigmation in the Y direction by selecting Stig Y. As you can see, the rocking has almost been eliminated. As you can see, the rocking has almost been eliminated. Do not adjust the aperture, the gun shift, or the gun tilt. Changing them can make it impossible to see any image. Now when we focus, we get a very sharp image. We can increase the magnification and still get a clear image even at 20,000 magnification. This shows the capability of the SCM if it is used properly. For most purposes, we use an accelerating voltage of 15 kilovolts. For very high magnification, you can go as high as 20 kilovolts. 
Do not exceed 20 kilovolts. Doing so can damage the machine. As we can see, the higher accelerating voltage gives us more noise, but also gives us more contrast. This is a magnification of 35,000. If we change back to 15 kilovolts, we have less contrast. If we go down to 10 kilovolts, we cannot achieve the same magnification. The image is very low in contrast and is also fuzzy. 15 kilovolts is the recommended all around operating voltage. If you have a material that is an insulator, you will not be able to get a good image even using the conducting carbon tape. This is demonstrated with a small piece of glass. You can clearly see the image shifting on the screen. This is because the glass is acquiring a charge and it's deflecting the position of the electron beam. The charging can be prevented by coating the sample with a thin layer of gold in the gold sputter coater. After we have adjusted our image for magnification and contrast, click on the slow scan speed. This will give us the best image quality. The button has multiple speeds. Click on the button to change the speed. The different speeds give different resolutions. After we have selected the slow scan speed, we click on the Quartz PCI icon. This will capture an image and open the PCI Quartz software. We can measure features on the image by using the measuring tool. The first thing we should do is compare the calibration of the measuring tool to the scale by checking the length of the scale. Align the bottom leg of the cursor with one end of the scale. Hold down the left mouse button and then drag the cursor so that the bottom leg of the cursor is aligned with the other end of the scale. In our case, the Quartz PCI thinks that this distance is 9.78 microns, which is equal to the length of the scale. If you feel this distance is not the correct value, contact MIRC staff for recalibration. We can also draw a line and display the length of the line on the image. If we save the image right now, we will not save the line or the distance. We must click on the overlay menu and click apply to image. This will make the scale line and distance part of the image. When saving, go to File, Save As, and only save on the server Grover. All files on the SCM computer will be periodically deleted. Select the type of file you wish to save it as. JPEG is recommended for small size. There are many options for drawing on your image and adding text. Remember, whenever we add anything to the image, we must make sure to apply the overlay to the image or it will not be saved. If we want to save another image, minimize the course PCI software, find an image you wish to capture, click on slow scan speed, and then click on course PCI. We then need to open the window for the course PCI software. First begin by turning off the high voltage. Then turn the magnification down all the way by using the dial on the control box. If we have selected raster rotation or any of the other options, we need to turn them off when we are finished. Then return the Y axis to 25, the X axis to 60, the Z axis to 30 on the black numbers, and the tilt to 0. Bend the chamber the same way in which we did in the beginning of this video. Once you have the chamber door open, carefully remove the sample and stub. Close the chamber door by holding the chamber door closed and pressing the evac on button. When the chamber has pumped down, shut down the Hitachi software. Do not shut down the LUT32 copy application. After watching this training video, you should have a good understanding of how to vent and open the chamber, mount a sample on the provided stubs, load a sample into the chamber, capture an image. If you have any further questions, please direct them to the trainer for this equipment. Please do not direct your questions to Charlie.